Okay, very good, very good. Welcome to all of you, whether you are a current student, past student, or your kids are current students. Okay, so I just wanted to get a feel of what you do. Well, I see that there are 66 participants. Okay, let's honor your time by jumping straight in to the content. Okay, so the first thing I wanted you to do is something called a Mentimeter. Mentimeter. Okay, can all of you take out your phone or tablet? and key in menti.com, M-E-N-T-I dot com, okay? And key in these six digits, 5382588, 5382588, and then start keying in the answer. Between one to five, how motivated are you currently, okay, in your job or studies during this entire COVID-19 period? Oh, somebody is a two. Thankfully, it is anonymous, so please, just answer the truth. Answer the truth, okay? Wow, the number is not looking very hopeful right now. Okay. 14 of you have answered and the average is 2.7. Wow. Looks like tonight's talk is really, really necessary. Okay, let's give you another 20 seconds to answer. I don't need all 66 to answer, Yeah, but at least we should have a fair sample size. I used to study statistics in NTU, one of my modules, so sample size is very important to get a good picture of it. Okay, 10 more seconds to go. Wow, it's hardly breaking three. Eh? Currently, stock market's doing very well despite the whole economy tanking. Yeah, but your motivation not doing very well. Let's look into this later. Okay, so now 42 of you have answered and the average is three. We need to do something about this, obviously. The second and last question is this, okay? What are the top three factors that motivate you in life? You can key in any three words, okay? Whatever pops into your head. Don't, don't overthink about this. Don't overanalyze. Go into menti.com and key in top three factors that motivate you. <laughs> Literature student. <laughs> Sunshine also come in. Very, very nice. Very nice. Peace of mind. Laughter. Hey, money spell wrongly. Lee. Become monet. Monet. Okay, must spell correctly so that the system can recognize the same word. And the more people key in the word, the bigger the word appears. This is called a word cloud. Very good, very good. Wow, the triple F of life. Food, family, and friends. <laughs> okay, very nice, very nice. Well, family is still winning. But I feel like I am a competitor for the race course. Yes, family, family winning. Family winning. Money is coming in very close. Very, very close. Happiness is next. Okay. Is this the final answer? 35 people replied. Well, I see one very small child there. Child. Grades. Wow, grades motivate you in life. That's the first time I've ever seen grades motivate you in life. Okay. Very good, very good. And then um, salary, I see it there. Hey, very good. Huh? Money is not very, very big. Family is much bigger. Friends is next. And money is about there. Unfortunately, love is very, very small. Okay, in five seconds time, I'm moving on. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, please take a picture of this. This is the answer for Hua Chong. Family, friends and money are together and happiness, and the rest are all peripherals, including love. Thank you, thank you very much for participating. i just like to start this way, so that uh, I can get a feel of what you are thinking of before I share my content. Now, for the content proper. How to stay motivated during COVID-19. Okay, truth be told, actually, whatever you learn tonight, is not just during COVID-19. It is also for any crisis you face in life. Okay, let me repeat. Whatever crisis you face in life, including COVID-19, including retrenchment, including even sickness, touch wood, okay? All these things, you can continue to stay motivated if you just follow the steps tonight. There are three kinds of people in the world. 
some people they are unmotivated regardless of whether there's crisis or not okay hopefully that does not describe you the second kind they are motivated only when there are external circumstances that motivate them so maybe they are promoted maybe new, newly married maybe their business doing well maybe they're healthy so they are motivated the moment they are not healthy business not doing well there's COVID-19 they are not motivated so the purpose of tonight is for us to become category number three we become motivated regardless okay and a keyword being regardless of circumstances that means it doesn't matter what happens to our country our economy or to even our personal health and career we will remain motivated is that possible i want to tell you it is okay so this is me in case you're wondering i just wanted to tell you that since young i had only one path to success and i believe a lot of us share the same philosophy we should study hard and my parents made me wear this robe, go to a studio and take picture to show me very clearly what they want out of my life, right? They want me to graduate, be a ta sheng. And I was very clear. Uh, I never questioned this before. Since Premi 1, I knew I was going to study hard and become a ta sheng. Right? I think a lot of us resonate with this. You know, very, very few. Okay, for example, my son would say, why do I need to be touched? Yes, okay. yeah, but during my era, very, very few people question that. Most people say, if I can study, I will study. Nowadays, some people want to be YouTuber, a Minecraft player. You know, this is a very com um, modern phenomenon. But during my days, we want to be a uni grad to bring honor to our family. By the way, if this resonates with you, can you put yes in the chat? Okay, let's keep it interactive. Just put yes. That means since young, you wanted to study hard to get a degree so that you can bring honor and make your parents proud of you. If this describes your script in life in the past, then put yes. Okay. A lot of people are like that. And then I actually did my parents proud. Right? I studied very hard. I scored 270 for my PSLE. Not, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. And I went to the top class of Chinese high, uh, sec 1A. And then it became Sec 2A, and then I didn't take bio, so I went to 3C. So 3C is the top class with non-bio, uh, 3A, 3B, uh, bio, and then I went to 4C. By the way, Mr. Pang, I don't know whether you're here today, he is my Sec 1 and Sec 2 classmate. Yeah, okay? So <laughs> we have a very good legacy. Uh, are you wondering, like, who is me? Okay, the, the one in the middle. The one, I, I know I look very different. Hey, come on, many years have passed. Don't, don't be like that, okay? Uh, many years have passed, so the one in the middle is me. Okay, that was before I started wearing specs. My eyes are actually the worst part of my entire body. Okay, that's another story altogether. So I graduated from Hua Chong, uh, S24, and I was very, very honored to win a scholarship from Singapore Stock Exchange. Yeah, uh, honestly, uh, let me confess to you, I never wanted a scholarship. Yeah, because I didn't want a bond and I, want, I wanted freedom. And moreover, what I was studying, uh, <laughs> nobody in their right mind will ever sponsor my studies. Okay, I studied mass communication. Yes, mass communication. Some people treat it as a dump, dumping ground. They say, I only those with hard say, you know, like don't know how to study, then no choice, lah. cannot enter law, cannot enter engineering, then go to mass comm. Lah. Yeah, but by the way, I score very well and I still went to mass comm. Nobody would sponsor you for Mascom except SGX. This company is a godsend. My parents are not very rich, so I would not be able to study uni without them, except maybe take student loan. But SGX gave me scholarship without any bond. By the way, it's too late already. If you apply for SGX scholarship today, they will have bond already. Okay, I was the last batch without bond. And I was very, very honored to get a SGX scholarship uh, by the way, I'm the person on the left, okay? Uh, a lot of people say, hey, how come your looks changed so much over the years? <laughs> I did not have cosmetic surgery. Yeah? All I did was gain weight. That's all, okay? Gain weight. And following this script, right? Your parents want you to get a degree. And what's next? Chen jia li ye, right? Chen jia li ye. You know, I follow the script to a T. I graduate. I got scholarship. I went to work. I got married at 26. 26, huh? ah, and then I became a father at 28, okay? I really follow this movie script to the T. And 
I tell you, by all means, uh, it looks very successful. Correct? This guy, study hard, good grades, good job, good family, good wife, very successful. And then I got poached by an investment bank. This bank, by the way, is called Daiwa, D-A-I-W-A. Hey, I studied MESCOM, but I end, ended up in a banking world. It's very weird. Okay, that's another story altogether. Another day, I'll share this topic. So I, I was in the banking industry for the longest time. And I was earning a lot, okay, as a banker. And then after that, Nomura poached me. Nomura, Hong Kong. This was in 2011. And I brought my entire family to Hong Kong. You know, being an expat is another dream of mine. Well, I don't know where this idea came from. You know, somewhere along the line, I suddenly thought, how nice it is to be an expat. You know, there's prestige, the money is good, people take very good care of you. And then all my three kids study international school. Of course, the youngest one just study nursery. But the other two study Singapore International School in Hong Kong. So I was very proud of what I've achieved over the years. But I think you can see where this is going. Huh? You know, the ending is not very happy. Okay, something happened to me in office. Something like this. It's called corporate zombie. Okay, who has ever heard of this phrase? Can you key in CZ? Just two letters uh, to save time. Okay, CZ, if you have ever heard of this phrase. Corporate zombie. It was widely reported in Straits Times just a few years ago. And then suddenly everyone was talking about it. Then I realized, hey, I'm a corporate zombie, you know? The, the reason why I was a corporate zombie was because my body was in office, but my heart wasn't in office. You know, just like zombies, they, they look like they are moving around. I just watched Train to Busan Part 2 uh, two days ago. By the way, it's not very good. You can save your money, no need to watch. Okay, so there were zombies walking around and they look alive, but you know they are not alive. Right? Their heart is not pumping. These are dead people walking. So some people call it the walking dead, right? Corporate zombie. I don't know. The zombies are walking dead. Corporate zombies are called working dead. Right? They are working, but they are dead inside. So that described me during those days. Every day I went to work for one reason and one reason only. Anybody wants to guess what is that reason? What is the reason I went to work? <laughs> Salary, money, income. I needed to feed my large family. Till today, I'm wondering, how come I have three kids? Huh? <laughs> you know, with a large family, it's a larger responsibility. So I needed to work no matter whether I like the job or not. Yeah, so when I was in Hong Kong, I looked very successful on social media. You know, I posted myself uh, going around and then I dressed well, but I was dead inside. I, I didn't know what to do. And then I thought it was something unique. But then the newspaper reported that over half of Singapore companies have zombie employees, people who are disengaged at work, people who go to work purely to earn money and not for any special meaning. And then the subsequent year, 2018, okay, you can see the date on the left. People are tuning out. That means they are mentally tuning out. Instead of giving 100% to their job, people are only giving 50%. Okay, just enough, just enough to keep their job, but not too much because it's not their own company. And when you compare across the region, Singapore ranks among the lowest, okay? We are the least satisfied with our employers. I think to a lot of you, it may not come as a surprise, right? You can just look at your own colleagues. Sometimes you look at your own manager and they look like zombies. They don't look like they want to be there. It is very, very tragic. And as if that is not enough, okay, all these corporate zombies, by the way, is before the COVID-19 virus. Before. And then COVID-19 struck. Singapore layoffs may hit 100,000. This was way back already, okay, a few months ago. Currently, the projection is 200,000. 200,000 jobs will be gone. That means 200 families will be impacted. Resorts World just announced they're going to retrench stuff. If those who are too young to remember, let me just inform you that Resorts World Sendoza was built to solve a crisis, okay? After SARS, S-A-R-S, I know some of you were not born yet. After SARS, 
the, the, the government needed to stimulate the economy and they built two large casinos despite our, our protests, despite all the religious leaders signing petition to say we don't want casino, but they still built two in order to save jobs. And now this solution called Resorts World Sentosa is retrenching stuff. Can you see the irony that the solution a few years ago has become part of the problem? And just a few days ago, it was reported Singapore is now officially in technical recession. recession. Our GDP has shrunk 41.2%. It is very, very tragic. And Piyush, uh, the CEO of DBS has already said that the worst is yet to come. I mean, they are the largest bank in Asia. They should know what they're talking about. You know, banks generally take your deposits, like you put USB, DBS, and then they take the deposit to loan out to companies. And they can see that a lot of companies cannot return the money. The companies close down, they have bad debt, so they realize that there's a lot of non-performing loans. Okay, so this is he's projecting now based on the statistics he see that things are going to get a lot worse in this kind of backdrop where people are corporate zombies people are inflicted with the COVID-19 virus people lose their job people with jobs feel very uncertain about the future no wonder our rating is three out of five no wonder okay people who are motivated only by success only by external circumstances Definitely, it is very natural to feel zoned out right now, to feel very uncertain and demotivated right now. So tonight, I hope to present to you a gift. Okay, it's a gift that I discovered by myself after experiencing some crisis of my own, after reading certain books. This is my solution. Okay, disclaimer, disclaimer. This solution is something I discovered for myself. You know, it may not work for you. So please just take it with a pinch of salt from your personal filter and see which part of this motivation ladder works well for you. Okay, If you can find one piece that works well for you, then I think tonight you have not wasted your time. Okay, let me start. By the way, let me credit two sources. Okay, One is called Maslow's Hierarchy. Most of you would have heard of it. But the second one is less well known. If you like reading books, I highly, highly, highly recommend this book by Dr. Scott Peck. It's called The Road Less Traveled. It has been translated to many languages already. It is a book about psychology. Okay, Maslow is also psychology. Uh, the Road Less Traveled is also psychology. So I combined these two concepts together and also reflected about my life. And I came up with this thing called the motivation ladder. Okay, so that is the main reason why you joined this webinar tonight. Starting from the very bottom, it is called survival. And during COVID-19, there are many people like this, right? All they want to do is earn enough to pay bills. If only I can earn enough to pay bills, I think enough already. No, I don't need further motivation. I have bad news for you. This is the lowest level. If this is the only thing that motivates you, then definitely you will rank yourself maybe one or two out of five, okay? So please aim higher. Stability. Some people want a comfort zone. So they are earning enough. But now they want to make sure this job can stay for life. Hopefully, they can retire in that job. Hopefully, they are not even seconded to other countries or other departments. They will do the same work for the next 20, 30 years because they feel very comfortable doing it. They don't feel challenged. No stress. Okay, so some people are motivated by comfort zone. It's a little bit linked to your personality as well. Some people of a certain personality type, they like to be stable and they like comfort zone. There's nothing right or wrong. It's just that in terms of Maslow's hierarchy and according to Dr. Scott Peck, this is also very low in the motivation ladder. That means a little bit of shaking, you know, a bit of earthquake to your economy and to your comfort zone is going to cause you a great deal of depression. So if you want happiness for your life and for your family, I suggest you aim higher. Let's go for something called social, okay? Social means you want to help people. I'm very sure some of you are motivated by this. I would like to know who you are, okay? Can you put the word social if this resonates with you? The reason why you go to work is to help people. You can be helping government, right? If you are into politics or the government, 
it can be helping your boss, you can be helping customer clients, you can be helping your teammates, even helping the person sitting on your left or right, right? Students, same thing, right? You go to school, of course, to do well for your A-levels, for whatever you want to do well in. Yeah, but at the same time, I know some of you really love to help people. I want to thank a guy called Xiao Hui, you know, in set 4C, he sat on my left. And then I was very poor in my mathematics. And he was always staying back during recess to help me. So if he's here on this call tonight, he will be typing social in the chat group. Okay, there are people like that and I want to thank God for such people. Okay, it's these people that make the world a nicer place. However, if you notice, in terms of the motivation ladder, this is only in the middle. <laughs> Do you know what's wrong with helping people? Some of these people may not thank you. Some of these people may not be grateful to you. Just imagine uh, that your main motivation is to help people and these people, instead of thanking you, instead of helping you back, they actually backstab you. Well, in office with students, I think it hasn't happened yet, okay, thankfully. Yeah, but once you start working, you will know what it means that when you help other people, some people don't just stop thanking you, they actually backstab you. They actually write emails, nasty emails about you to your bosses. So you start to be very demotivated. You start to lose hope in humanity. Like, hey, what's wrong with people? How come I'm so kind to people? I'm trying to help people, but these people are so unkind to me. Let me digress a little bit and tell you, tell you about 2011. I, I moved to Hong Kong with my family. You already know that. And day one of my job, day one in Nomura, I went to my colleague, right, my Hong Kong colleague, and I said, hey, hi, you know, I, I'm new here. Can, can you help me with the shared folder? I need to find a form to sign so that I can gain security for several levels I need to go to. And this, this lady did not even look up from her computer. So I thought maybe she didn't really hear me, and I tapped on her shoulder. Hey, excuse me, can you help me? Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> this was her response. You know, it, I, I'm a very friendly guy. I'm very sociable even way back since primary school. Right? In Hua Chong, I love to interact, which is why I went for the election and became student council president. You know, I'm very, very sociable. So to have somebody, a, a new colleague, treat me like that in a foreign country, it was very, very painful for me. Right. So social being my motivation factor, but when people are not social to me, it hurt me very, very deeply. Okay, I think some of you have been through such situations in life and you, you can feel what I'm talking about. So you cannot stay there, right? Because if you only want to be motivated by helping people, at some point you'll be burnt out, right? You keep helping and helping and people treat you like a doormat. Okay, so let's go higher. Something called success. That means you have a feeling of achievement. Feeling of achievement. This is very important. By the way, these are not mutually exclusive. Huh? That means you don't replace one with another. So what you do is you stack up. Okay, so you want to earn enough and you want to be comfortable. So these two stack up. And then on top of that, you want to help people. That means you do not compromise comfort zone, do not compromise earning enough, but you now want to help people. And on top of helping people, now you add another layer called sense of achievement. You want to actually gain market share. You actually want to win certain awards. You actually want to find the cure for cancer or the cure for COVID-19. This is called sense of achievement. It is actually way higher than just merely helping people. Bill Gates is a very good example. Right? Bill Gates is helping people, but he's not just helping the neighbor across the road or helping buy food for someone else. He is actually running a huge mega fund to help countries, you know. This is his sense of achievement, right? He has already built up Microsoft from scratch and now he wants to be able to solve world poverty. You know, I really respect this guy called Bill Gates. I'm sure you have heard of him before, but you know enough about him. Go to Netflix and watch a three-part documentary about Bill Gates. It's called Decoding the Brain of Bill Gates. You will love it. You know, while watching the documentary, I kept crying. Because I compare to myself, I'm thinking like, sometimes I feel burnt out doing coaching. I, I'm a life coach, by the way. So when I coach people, some of them misunderstand me, some of them don't take action, and it burns me out. But the moment I watch the documentary on Bill Gates, and I see that, wow, 
this guy doesn't give up. Like he wants to bring clean toilets to China and India. He wants to give free vaccination to South Africa. This guy doesn't give up. So I'm very, very inspired by him in terms of helping people as well as a sense of achievement. The last one also starts with S. Okay, let's, let's make it a game. Can you guess what is the very top of the motivation ladder? Something that gives you 100% control over your destiny. Okay, what is it? Starting with S. Let me pause here for a while and see your answer. Okay, self-actualization, that's by Maslow. Yeah, but I want to quote Dr. Scott Peck. So for people who have read Dr. Scott Peck before, you know the answer is not self-actualization. Wow! I am very, very impressed. It just shows the quality of Hua Chong student. <laughs> yeah, very good. It is called spiritual growth. Okay, if you are taking notes, please write it down. Spiritual growth. This is not religious, huh? It's not religious growth. Okay, it's spiritual growth. This is my sincere belief. By the way, I'm a Christian. Yeah, but tonight is not a Christian talk. I believe that regardless of race, language, or religion, all of us have a spirit. Okay, even free thinkers have a spirit. Yeah, we, we believe in team spirit, class spirit, isn't it? <laughs> the spirit of sports. We use spirit as an analogy for almost anything. And all of us know that being a human being, we are way more than just flesh and bone. Right? You, you feel it in your soul, regardless whether you have religion or not. You feel it in your soul. Yes! Watch on spirit! Yeah! Watch on! Kaba, aba. Okay, sorry, sorry. But my student counsel spirit is coming back. Okay. Uh, no need to shout back. Uh, if not, your neighbor will complain. So I, I realized that spirit is very, very important. And my understanding of spirit has changed over the years. So when I was in Hua Chong, it was about you know, team spirit, class spirit. Then when, because I'm a, I'm a Christian, right? So it's about spiritual, wow, you know, holy spirit. Then after that, when I start working, it's about or the company spirit, or actually they call it core values, you know, which is spirit, like, basically. And then as I read the book by Dr. Scott Peck, I realized actually it's way deeper than that. You know, this thing called spiritual growth actually solves all the problems in life. I'm not exaggerating here. You know, if you want to climb Nepal, you want to go to some mountain to look for a long, white bearded guru and ask him, Oh, dear sir, what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is spiritual growth. It's very simple. People get married not just for passion and love, not for you know, procreation. People get married for spiritual growth. Why do we work? It's not for salary. It's not for promotion. It's not even to find a cure for cancer. We work to find spiritual growth. Why do people climb the highest mountain, dive in the deeper sea? It is for spiritual growth. Why do we go through heartaches? Why do we go through divorces? Why do we go through cancer? It is for spiritual growth. Okay? In my personal humble opinion, spiritual growth, these two words summarize the meaning of life regardless of race, language, or religion. Okay, if this resonates with you, can you just put yes, okay? I don't believe it resonates with everybody, Yeah, but I believe at least a fraction of you will resonate with this, that the meaning of life is in spiritual growth. Coxin, Constance, hey, we should meet for coffee, uh. your things we think alike. Yeah, later, I'll leave my contact number. Feel free to WhatsApp me, and I really do want to meet you, either that or at least Zoom, you know, get to know each other. Okay, let me continue. So if you replace money with spiritual growth, if you replace success with spiritual growth, if you just put spiritual growth as your main motivation in life, I guarantee you, you become unstoppable. Unstoppable. Later, I'll share with you some case studies of how some people have become unstoppable because of spiritual growth. Okay, but for now, just take my word for it first. Okay, So spiritual growth, you keep seeking growth. I'm going to share with you a very simple story. There are two seeds, okay, and they are very good friends. So the first seed told the master, Dear master, I only want one thing in life. I, I want to be comfortable. Can you put me on the table, turn on the aircon, and just leave me alone? I want to be very comfortable. The second seed told the master, Oh, dear master, I will let you do anything to me, but 
based on only one condition. I want to grow. I want to grow. So the master fulfilled the first request by putting onto the table in an aircon room and left it alone. And the master also fulfilled the second seed's request by going downstairs into the garden, put it into the muddy ground, stepped on the seed and allow it to be exposed to the elements under the scorching heat, under the storm. And this seed was wondering, why? Why are you doing this to me? I wanted to grow. Why do you torture me? This was what the second seed said to itself. A lot of people go through life and we have family tragedies. I'm a life coach for the past six years. I've heard so many family tragedies. I have a good friend from Ho Chong and the wife passed away from cancer recently. I went to the funeral. It was so sudden and it was so tragic and she, she left behind a five-year-old son. Why do such things happen to us? And you might think that such things only happen to bad people, but no, no, perfectly good people. You know, recently a doctor died. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And recently the Starhub CEO, I brought the Starhub CEO to Tokyo for a financial roadshow and he just passed away from heart attack in London. He was such a good guy, a good father, a good husband, he, and he exercised a lot. He, he ran marathons, he went diving, and he died from heart attack. Why do such weird things happen to good people? If this question bothers you, here's the answer. It's to help all of us to achieve growth. So back to this story. The second seed was wondering why it's being tortured, and then a few months later, it understood why. It was growing. While the first seed, nothing happened to it. Those who read the book called Mindset, you will know what I'm talking about. We can choose a fixed mindset or we can choose a growth mindset. And it is up to you. Life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Let me repeat that again. Life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you want to grow, nobody can stop you from growing. If you want comfort, you don't want to grow, nobody can force you. Nobody can force you and compel you to grow. So you make a decision tonight. Okay, it's only a one hour talk, but I don't want it to be wasted. I'm not here to entertain you, juggle, make you laugh. I hope to bring value in your life, to change your life. So that at least starting from tonight, you seek spiritual growth rather than anything else. And then you become unstoppable. Here's a case study about how I motivated myself during a personal crisis long before COVID-19. In 2013, I lost my job. Honestly speaking, I never dreamed that a Hua Chong student can lose my job. Seriously. It is among the top schools. Top two or three schools. I mean, depending on your perspective. And how can a top student from a top school who has a SJ scholarship lose his job? I mean, what kind of world is this? It's ridiculous. And I did not do anything wrong. You know, there was no insider trading. There was no fraud. I was a very, very hardworking staff. No doubt I was a corporate zombie. Yeah, but at least physically I went to work. You know, I didn't get MC and I didn't uh, submit reports late. You know, I, I really did what I was supposed to do and yet I lost my job. I still remember that day. HR manager and my boss asked me to go to another floor and I went into the meeting room and they passed me an envelope. And when I opened the envelope, it said, Dear Eugene Xia, your role has been made redundant. Do you know the feeling of seeing the word redundant used on you? You know, human beings, what we want most of all is to grow and to be useful for society. That's what we want in the inner core of our soul. To be called redundant is one of the worst things to happen to you. Don't even think about the loss of income. Just the word redundant used on you is enough to break your soul. I, I really think people should ban this word. You know, if you are into HR, can you seriously consider banning this word from a retrenchment letter? Don't use the word redundant. You know, there's no humanity in the word redundant. You know, this, this word on the letter has affected me very, very deeply. 2013 December, I received this letter. 
thankfully there's a golden handshake because it's an investment bank. So they paid me three months of salary and asked me not to come to work. So some people view it as a holiday, right? Because you still have income, but you don't go to work. After that, when I stopped receiving income, I had to look for work. And that's where the nightmare began. My entire 2014 was looking for a job. You know, I was quite arrogant. I, I must confess, I was quite arrogant because I was a student council president, I had scholarship. So I always had this impression, the moment I look for a job, people will queue up for me. The moment I send my resume to the headhunter, they will all clamor for me. They will even bid for me. 10K, 20K, 20K, 30K, 30K, 40K, 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 45K. <sighs> Only in my dreams. Nobody was looking for me. The headhunter told me, I'm, I'm so sorry, you only have a Bachelor of Communications in, from NTU. It's not really you know, hot in demand. Ouch. I'm, I'm sorry, you only work in Hong Kong for two and a half years. You know, you're not exactly well-traveled. You know, you're not like London three years, New York four years. You know, uh, we can't do much for, for you. By the way, in case you're wondering how much I used to earn in Nomura, in Hong Kong, all you need to do is Google. Okay, if you Google Eugene Xia retrenchment, you will find the Li He Zhao Bao article, Channel 8 News, and even recently, my Channel 5 News clip. Okay, I was featured for one full minute on Channel 5 News. And that is a regular news, not, not a documentary. I can't believe they gave me one full minute to announce how much I was earning and then how much I lost and then how much I borrowed from my brother. <laughs> it was a little bit embarrassing. But at the same time, I wanted to do it because I know that about 200,000 families will be affected this year and I just wanted to inspire them that no matter how hard life is, spring will come. And then next comes summer. So this was a very painful part of my life. I went to the government and I asked for a grant. You know, I asked for the financial assistance scheme. I'm very thankful to be in Singapore, by the way. I'm very, very grateful. So I was on the financial assistance scheme designed by our government, and I'm very grateful. This is designed for the bottom 20% income earners of Singapore. Yes, you didn't hear it wrongly. Okay, the student council president of 1993 and 94 actually became the bottom 20% income earner of Singapore. I really don't know how that happened. It's really ridiculous. Uh, and my children had to bring food coupons to school. I'm very thankful to the government for giving my children food coupon. But just imagine that you go to school with a food coupon and you go to the school canteen exchanging for food using the food coupon. It feels like Oliver Twist, isn't it? My children's father, me, doesn't have enough to give to my children until I need government to give them a food coupon. How pathetic is that? So this was 2014 and 15. Do you know that my name is still on the school hall of Ho Chong? And every time I send my son to school, sometimes I will just go in and look at the name there and I feel so ashamed. How can a guy with a name etched on the hall of Ho Chong be in the financial assistance scheme? What tragedy. After that, I went to look for a few new friends. Okay, anybody knows who this guy is? The, the one who is bald, okay? The one on the right is Eugene Xia, okay, that's me. And then the one in the middle is my mother. Okay, so who is the guy on the left? Let's see whether you know him. Not Tong Hai, not Tong Hai. Yes, Angeline, very good. Okay, he is the 18 chef boss, otherwise known as Benny Satio. Benny Satio. Yes, 18 chefs. Okay, this guy is amazing. Of course, I've read about him in Street Times, but to meet him in person, I tell you, is jaw drop. This guy was in jail for most of his life, you know, either a drug halfway house or jail. So it's as far from Hua Chong as possible already. You know, very, very few, I'm sure there's one or two, very few Hua Chong students have gone to jail before. But this guy never entered Hua Chong. This guy didn't even graduate with O-levels. This guy spent his entire young adulthood in jail. At the age of 46, 46, he became a chef. Can, can you just imagine this for a while, that you started your career at age 46? And today, he is a multi-millionaire staying in a penthouse, driving a Mercedes, 
a self-made man. I want to meet him to find out from this guy, how did you do it? And he was very kind to allow me an interview. I went to 18 chefs, ate his food, and then brought my mom along and I interviewed him. Whatever he told me really inspired me. So I decided I'm going to follow what he said rather than what I used to believe about life. And he told me spiritual growth, by the way, he's a Christian, spiritual growth is very important to him. He wants to grow. Not only does he want to grow, he wants to make sure his staff, his chef, his waiters also grow. 30% of his staff are ex-convicts. This guy looks like a hooligan, but he has a heart of an angel. Do not judge people by appearance. Benny Satio is an angel. Later, I'll share with you how he relates to the motivation ladder. The other guy who inspired me a lot is called Jason Chi. Can anyone type in the chat, what sports does Jason Chi play? What's the sports that Jason Chi represents? And he has even won gold medals for it. Gold medals. Very good. Oh, Angeline knows everything. Huh? Hey, have you seen my script before? <laughs> okay, Angeline, you are correct. Kevin is correct. Ah, Constance is correct. Okay, it is ping pong or table tennis. Okay, let me share a very short story how he picked up ping pong. By the way, in primary school, he used to play ping pong. But as an adult, he joined the Navy and he stopped playing ping pong. Yeah, ex-Navy, Kevin, correct. Anyone from Navy here, by the way? Yeah, just, just wondering, uh, digress a little bit. Yeah, please put in Navy if you used to serve in the Navy as National Service or you are currently in the Navy. By the way, I served in the Navy during my National Service days. So when I read Jason's story, it resonated with me a lot. He was on board a ship and then an accident happened. And can you imagine, I mean, most accidents maybe just cause an injury on one part of your body. This accident was so horrifying it tore three of his limbs apart, right? Two legs gone, one hand gone. And the only hand that is left has three fingers only. This, this is a nightmare. No matter from what perspective you see it, it's one of the worst things that can happen to a human being. For your information, this is not the only tragic thing that happened to Jason. Recently, he was diagnosed with cancer. If you believe in luck, I will say Jason Chi has very, very bad luck. But you cannot tell it when you meet him. This guy is a miracle. And by the way, if you are on Facebook, please connect with Benny. He did not ask me to do this. Huh? Yeah, I just feel that in order to motivate yourself, you should follow Benny. Where Benny still goes through up and down. And this year is horrible for him because it's COVID-19. So his restaurants are really losing big time. Okay. And Jason also goes through up and downs in life. You know, on a daily basis, he needs people to bathe him. Correct? So it's really horrible. And yet, right, I've never seen two more joyful people. These two have so much positive attitude and you can see it ooze out from every pore on their Facebook. So please go to Facebook and look for Benny Satio and Jason Chi. And since you're on Facebook, look for Eugene Xiao also. And then I promise you, almost every day when you check Facebook, you are full of positive energy, okay? So Jason Chi exercised his only hand and he started winning table tennis competitions. His counselor was the one who asked him to pick up the sports again so that every day when he wakes up, he has something to look forward to. This is called spiritual growth because if I am him, for example, and I lose two, one hand, two legs, I might say like, are you crazy? You want me to play table tennis? Can you open your eyes? Can't you see I'm disabled? but not Jason. He said, yes, I'll pick up table tennis. I'll represent Singapore. These are amazing people. Let me go back to the motivation ladder and focus on the top three. Both Jason and Benny focus a lot on helping people. I already told you Benny hires ex-convicts. Jason raises funds for charity. Both of them are driven by sense of achievement. Do you notice? Benny wants to open more and more restaurants so that he can feed more and more ex-convicts families. And Jason isn't done yet. Huh? He wants to win as many gold medals as possible and he continues to train his body. And both of them are seeking spiritual growth every single day. Let's be inspired by them. 
if you ask me how do you increase your motivation how do you 100 percent control your motivation my answer is simple please write this down find inspirational benchmarks i call it benchmarks because i was from the financial industry okay every fund manager will find a benchmark correct some of you are in finance i know right Ho Chong has a financial club as well if you find a benchmark then no matter how you manage the fund, you will always want to outdo the benchmark. If you want to be motivated, what you need most of all is to find someone who motivates you. It can be anyone. It can be Bill Gates. It can be Jason Chi. It can be Benny Satyo. It can be Elon Musk. It can be Mr. Pang from Ha Chong. You know, anything. Find somebody who inspires you. It can be your uncle, your father, your mother. Please look up at somebody it can be Lee Kuan Yew by the way I've looked up at you know towards Lee Kuan Yew for many years this guy could have been a very successful lawyer but he chose to run a small island how ridiculous is that you know full of racial disharmony and yet he managed to turn all that around I mean you you if you have been in Singapore for some time you know our story already right look to Lee Kuan Yew see him as an inspirational benchmark and you will never lose hope never Another benchmark I have is Nick Vigic. This guy is phenomenal. In 2016, despite being very broke, I still paid money to go to this conference called Success 2016. Can I, can I share a lie? <laughs> okay, I've been sharing the truth up to this point. Let me share a lie. I paid very little money for Success 2016 because I was very broke. So I was supposed to sit in the last row in Singapore Expo. But when I was there, I told myself I must be as near to Nick Vigic as possible. So I wore my suit, which I bought when I was in Nomura, you know, my banker suit. And I started walking all the way confidently to the front row and I sat down. And I refused to make any eye contact with any ushers. And amazingly, no one came to chase me away. <laughs> so there I was seated on the front row very near to Nick Vigit, which is why I can take such an awesome photo using my phone. Just being near him, right, was already very, very inspirational. This guy requires another guy to carry him to go on that platform. Can you imagine? Like, he cannot even get on the platform himself. He was only given 45 minutes to give a speech. 45 minutes. And halfway through, he got thirsty. And somebody had to come up and pour water into his mouth. This guy is my inspirational benchmark. If Nick has no hands and legs and can be such a motivational speaker around the world, and by the way, in, even if you are motivated by money, right, you should be inspired by him. He earns 25,000 US dollars for a 45 minute speech. Please write it down so that you can paste it in your bathroom wall and inspire yourself. 25,000 US dollars for a 45 minute speech. Some of us don't even earn that much in a given month. <laughs> and all he needs to do is to be carried up on stage and crack a few jokes, share his story, and people pay him 25,000 US dollars. So no matter what kind of judgment you place, whether it is through income or impact, this guy is amazing. Because of people like that, my life started turning around. I was invited for TED Talk. This was just last year, 2019, June. I, I tell you, I've been watching so many TED Talks in order to motivate myself. For the committee to call me and ask me, would you like to be one of our speakers? Is really a huge honor. By the way, TED Talk does not pay me. It's a free platform. This company called Big C, B I C S I, they paid me. To be honest, I wasn't paid 25,000 US dollars, but it's quite close. I was paid 15,000 US dollars to speak on 13 February. This was shortly before COVID 19 struck US for one hour, 10 30 a.m. to 11 30 a.m. You know, to, till today, I'm still pinching myself. That how can it be? This guy lost his job, became the bottom 20% of Singapore income earners, and then speaks Singlish, right? middle-aged Chinese man who doesn't look very good. And yet, Big C hired me 
to be a closing keynote speaker. And Big C, by the way, does semiconductor and IoT, Internet of Things. And I'm not even from that industry. <laughs> I cannot imagine why they would engage me to be their closing keynote speaker. And yet, it happened. I want to show you the power of the motivation ladder. Anything can happen to you, but nothing can stop you. After that, I started appearing in a few newspaper, TV shows, radio, podcasts, uh, business times, and so on. And so my story basically shows one thing. Okay, can you key in what's the moral of my story? You know, different people have different perspective to what they learn from my story and what they learn from the motivation letter. So please key it into the chat box now. Thank you. And I'm about to end, don't worry. We will try to stick within one hour. Let me stop sharing for a while and see what you type in. Okay, please share the moral of, yes, thank you. Okay, Kyokki, it's very important to find an inspirational benchmark. And by the way, if you already have an inspirational benchmark, can you key in the name as well? I want to see who inspires you. Okay, God, wow, wonderful. That's the ultimate already. <laughs> it's someone who never disappoints. Any Anyone else other than God? Okay particular mentor that you have, maybe your current manager, maybe your father, your mother, failure can be the seed of our spiritual growth. Wow, beautiful. Th thank you, Coxin, for that. It always seems impossible until it's done. <laughs> hey, this, all these look like t-shirt slogans, you know. Uh, we, I should start running a new business to print inspirational t-shirts. Okay, life with limits. Life, oh, life without limits, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. Okay, let me just finish off the slides and then we are done. And then I would love to take some of your questions. Okay, so this is the moral of the story. Please always focus on the top three part of your motivational ladder. If you feel that seeking spiritual growth is still a little bit distant, then at least start by helping people. Okay, at least start by helping people. During COVID-19, a lot of people need your help. Currently, I'm part of a movement called SG100. It is not part of PAP. It is not even part of the government. What we want to do is to bless as many normal Singaporeans as possible. So right now, we have a project called okay, JPB. So basically, we want to give food to those who are hungry. You know, you can start very low, just like that, or give face masks to people who cannot afford face masks. And then after that, you have a sense of achievement of wanting to even be better before, you know, compared to before COVID-19. Just like for me, I always benchmark my current income with the income that Nomura paid me. You know, I don't want to give myself excuse that I, just because I'm not a banker, I shouldn't be paid a banker's fee. No, I don't believe in that. I believe I should be paid more than what Nomura paid me because now I'm pursuing my passion. And finally, spiritual growth. Okay. And if you want to connect with me, I promise you I will share my mobile number. Please meet for coffee, especially those who resonates with my message tonight. Okay, right after this, I'm going to answer questions. So please don't go away. And I think we'll be taking photos as well. So this is like Chen Jia Fu, <laughs> our alumni photo together with some young students. Okay, if you have not enough time to key in my number into your phone, just quickly take a picture of this slide. And you can also point the camera at the QR code and immediately my LinkedIn profile will appear in your phone. Okay, in three seconds time, I'm going to stop sharing and then answer your questions. Three, two, one. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Eugene, for an inspirational talk. We'll be starting our Q&A now. So, Members of the audience can either type their question in the Zoom group chat or please raise your hand under the participants tab to ask a question uh, and we will prompt you to unmute your mic. Uh, we have a first question actually ah, okay. uh, good, from good. Coxin. Uh, she says, uh, hi Eugene, what are the first steps you took after you realized you need to change? Very good question. Okay, this is going to sound very controversial. I changed my friends. Yeah, I, I did not 
okay, I did not unfriend any of my ex Wachong classmates. Huh? They are still my good friends. We still hang out together. But I started hanging out with a lot of people who, for example, are disabled, ex convicts, famous authors, inspirational speakers. There's a famous saying, and some of you may have heard of it before. We are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. One more time. Huh? We are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. If you spend time with people who whine and groan and say, hey, COVID-19, what can I do? No wonder my business went down. Hey, do you know a lot of businesses actually went up during COVID-19? For your information, mine did, okay? My, my sales and my coaching went up 40% during COVID-19 compared to the same period last year. So it is an excuse to say that because of COVID-19, my business went down. But it's because of lack of creativity that my business went down. It's not because of COVID-19. So I like to hang around with people who have no excuses, who don't blame other people, who take ownership of their life. And the moment I did that, then I felt compelled to do the same. I always hang around with them. I hope this answers your question, Koksin. Change the average of your five people and you will change yourself. Oh, that's another one. Yes, uh, this question is from Georgina Chan. She says, many of us are very fortunate and leading good lives. Are you advocating your motivation ladder for greater fulfillment? Thanks for an interesting session. Oh, very, very good question. So if you are not going through crisis, that means even it's COVID-19, you are still landed, you know, in a landed property, driving your big car and still have lots of money in your bank, you know, you're very, very blessed. So I suggest that you also focus on the top three. Because you're blessed like Bill Gates, you should all the more help other people. And then this success part, right? You can find something else. For example, start a foundation, start a trust fund, you know, build an orphanage in Cambodia. There are many things that you can do as a sense of achievement. <laughs> right? Build a library, donate to Hua Chong, right? Build build another campus for Hua Chong if you are very, very blessed financially. So there's always something to do for social and for success. And the third part, right, is nothing related to your, your financial abundance at all. Right? You can be very, very broke and still be spiritually growing. And you can be very, very rich and still, still be spiritually growing. Right? The spiritual growth is completely not related to whether you're comfortable now or not. So I hope this answers your question, Georgina. Uh, we also have a question from uh, Ronald Tay. Oh, you look familiar. <laughs> hi, Eugene. Hi, hi. Thanks for the great talk. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, most of us have, uh, in fact, all of us would have benefited a great deal from uh, from your sharing session. It's a uh, great inspiration. But you know, uh, I I think this uh, because this series of talks, uh, what we wanted to do is really to try to you know, uh, get towards the students and, and really to find, try to, you know, encourage or find ways to help the students. So, so this, this uh, perhaps is probably skewed towards more towards students uh, in, in, in your, in your, in your, in your uh, talk about, you know, helping, trying to help others, trying to, you know, in terms of social work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that this is, is to come across uh, to the minds of many people, but just in case they are wondering, you know, how to, how to, how to take the first step, what to do, they are not sure of, you know, how, how, who can they help, how, they, how, how can they help, who to reach out to. Maybe mm -hmm. you can give some, some suggestions, how, how, mm -hmm. how, who they can approach, how, or, or what organization they can approach to, maybe as a start to help them as well. Uh, thought that may be okay. something useful, yeah. Thank, thank you, Ronald. Very, very good question. Yeah, I must confess and apologize. I've been sort of neglecting the, the students in my talk <laughs> because I am 44, so a lot of things happen after graduating from Ho Chong. So now let's focus a little bit on students. I, I've been 17, 18 before, so I can roughly understand how you feel. You know, everything is about grades because if you don't even have good grades, then your parents will be disappointed and you cannot even go to the uni of your choice and you have less options in life. Yeah, so I don't want to discount that. I don't want to tell you like, forget about grades. Let's just seek spiritual growth. Right? You know, that's very unrealistic. So please, by all means, pursue very good grades, but don't stop there. In fact, uh, if you go and watch my TED Talk, okay, it was for students. My TED Talk was for students. I was trying to appeal to the students not to just study hard for money. 
it is very meaningless to study hard for money. You know, if you ask any student, by the way, I've been coaching students also for the past six years, other than life coaching, I've been training students how to score well in their scholarship and how to find meaning in their studies. So this is what I've been doing. So when the students interact with me, and then I realized that a lot of them are very lost, right? Because they are in that particular JC because of their parents. And then now you ask them, what do you want to do next? A lot of them say, I cannot answer you. I really don't know what I want to do next. You know, my, my parents are the ones who want me to be doctor, to be engineer. So now I, I really don't know what I want to do. Yeah, and I can empathize with them because when I was in JC, I was studying physics, econs, double maths. But in the end, my degree was in mass comm, film studies. There's a huge disjoint, don't you think? Because finally, you know, finally, I wanted to study something that resonates with me. Not just something that everybody say, hey, very easy to score, you know, take double mats. You know, you just have to do lots of practices and you will score. For too long, I believed in this lie and that's why I felt I was a little bit wasting my, my time when I just want to score well. So now as a 44-year-old man, I want to tell all the 17, 18-year-olds and even if you're in uni, Look for meaning, meaning. Don't look for money. If you want to solve cancer or really help the poor in medical, then be a doctor. That will be a very meaningful doctor, not just because doctors earn a lot. If you really want to look at financial accounting and then tell a story from it and make sure companies are above board and then turn around companies from bankruptcy to really being very successful, then that is meaningful. Right, not just because it is a professional degree and you want to earn as an accountant or as a CFO. You know, please always look for something meaningful rather than money as your motivator when you study. Just imagine uh, if you are in your study room and you open the book and you feel very sleepy. Like, oh, I can't stand it. So boring. I don't want to study. And then when you think of, oh, no, cannot, cannot. I want to earn enough. I want to earn enough. <laughs> what kind of funny motivational factor is that? What you really want to tell yourself when you are very bored of studies is, hey, I better internalize this knowledge because one day I'm going to need it when I impact lives, when I help Singapore society, when I go abroad for a mission trip. Right? I better internalize this. Because if not, all you have is grades. You know? Do you know, I know so many students with A grade, but they actually forgot all their knowledge. It is very sad. Please don't become such a student. Make sure the knowledge is ingrained, internalized in your body, not just scoring well and then forgetting the knowledge. So hopefully, oh, and I forgot to answer one question that Ono said. Who can you look for help? My suggestion is to help each other, seriously. Now, of course, you can go and look for your MP. You can kind of look for me. You know, I would love to help you. But the greatest source of help is each other. But the population in Huachong is so big. You mean you cannot find people to help you? Teacher? Principal? Hey, by the way, Mr. Pang is my good friend, okay? We were in Sec 1, Sec 2 together. I know for a fact he wants to help you. He's one of the kindest person I've ever met. Like, he's very authentic. So please, if you really need help, look for either your teachers, your principal, or look for each other. They are very kind-hearted students. Look for your current president of student council. I have no idea who that person is. And then, when all else fails, please contact me. Okay, I would love to connect you with the relevant uh, ministries to help you. Thank you. Oh, there's more questions, right? Yes, we have more questions. Um, we have a question uh, from Natalie Tang. She said, uh, how did you slowly build up your business or career and self-confidence upon changing friends? How did your family support you? Well, Okay, family support me by being there. I mean, they could have left me, right? I know it sounds like a joke, but I actually have friends who were retrenched and their wife left them. And some, in some cases, the husband left them. It's very tragic. You know, divorce rates have been climbing in Singapore. And tonight's topic is not about divorce or marriage, but I just want to tell you, when, when the marriage is already on the rocks and then plus retrenchment, things are really tragic. Okay, so my family was there, they are my pillar of support, my children love me, and all these are very, very important for me, okay? So how did I build up my business? I have this very special thing called the mindset of flow. Uh, if you are also building a business, you might want to write this down. Mindset of flow. A lot of businesses fail because they don't flow, right? They, 
they sit down in front of a table, they draw their business plan, and then they draw their SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunities, threats. And then when things don't go their way, they are stuck. They say, hey, things are not according to my business plan. Do you know that right from day one in 2014, I had no business plan? <laughs> 2014, I went to ACRA and registered my company, which is called Trainium Academy Private Limited. And then I was thinking to myself, you know, I want to earn a living through talking, but what can I talk about? So I, I did not do that first before registering my company. I registered my company first, then I started thinking what I should talk about. So my first topic was parenting. <laughs> so I started a club called Raising Future Ready Kids Club. Okay, Fut Raising Future Ready Kids. By the way, if you are parents, you can go to Facebook and look for this club. Okay, Raising Future Ready Kids. And then parents paid me $500 per child to train their kids how to speak better, how to think clearer and creatively. So that was my first business. But I knew it wasn't sustainable because, you know, this marketplace has a lot of enrichment program. So I decided to switch to the PMET, all those middle, middle age guys. I want to help them brand themselves well so that firstly, they will always be relevant. Nobody can call them redundant ever again. And number two, if they do lose their job like me, they can easily brand themselves so that they can be successful again like me. Okay, so I wanted to run something for adults. So I started flowing, you see, from kids to adults. Then after that, companies started calling me. GIC called me, PWC called me, KPMG called me. and said, hey, can you coach our teams too? And if I did not flow, I will say, no, 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 I don't do such thing. I only coach PMETs to brand themselves. <laughs> this will be what I call a very fixed way of thinking. Right, so I learned to flow again. I'll say like, Ew, why not? Okay, so I decided to watch YouTube and then I started creating curriculum from scratch just to cater to all these companies that hired me as a leadership coach in their companies. And then after that, I went into financial management because I've been in finance all these years since 2001, Singapore Stock Exchange all the way until now, I'm still in finance. <laughs> so I started putting wealth advisory into my life coaching ecosystem. And then the whole thing just took off, you know. So today, I call my business the 3M business, which is nothing to do with the sticky pad. Huh? Mastery, mindset, and money management. So this is how I flow and evolve till today. And I'm still evolving and flowing for the future. So I hope I've answered uh, Natalie's question. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, we also have another question from William Ong. She says, I suppose those who attend this session are already quite self-motivated. Uh, well, I'm good for this group. How would you share with us how to motivate? Um, let me see. I can't really read this. Motivate those who does not like, uh, does not feel like attending. I guess motivate those who are not intrinsically motivated. Ah, okay. Very good. Very good. Okay, this one is a whole new topic. Huh? Tonight is about how to motivate yourself. When you want to motivate people, let's say if you're a leader of a team, there's something that you need to know about. It's called the MAP of motivation. MAP. And since you asked this question, let me give you some bonus content. Okay, so M, M stands for mastery. Please make sure that whoever is not motivated will always gain mastery over their field. Because if they are not good in what they do, of course, they will feel lousier and lousier. But if you send them for training and then they feel like, eh, wow, I'm actually very good at this. You know, this feeling of success would be motivating them. Okay? And if you're talking about children, uh, I don't know whether you're talking about adults or children. Let's say if your child is not motivated, then you can actually make sure you find the mastery of your child. So let's say like me, you know, I wasn't very good in engineering kind of stuff but I'm very good in communication kind of stuff. So make sure you don't force your child to do something he doesn't like because then he will never have mastery over that field. Make sure he gains mastery. Maybe it's dance, right? Maybe it's sports. And I, I know a lot of parents feel that, ah, yeah, this one, you know, no hope in Singapore one. Ah. Well, sports, what can you do? Have you heard of Fandi Ahmad, by the way? Fandi Ahmad is Singapore's first millionaire sports star. Okay, if you did not know that, please go and read his Wikipedia. Fadi Ahmad is Singapore's first sports star, millionaire. And till today, he's still very successful. So can you imagine if a very tiger mom came to Fadi Ahmad and said, stop playing soccer. Go, go, go. Go and study. I send you for tuition. If the next time you touch soccer ball, I, you, I give you warning. Uh, I cane you. Uh. 
Can you imagine if Fani Ahmad's mother was like that? Then we will never have heard of Fani Ahmad. So please allow your child to flourish and shine in a field that he can gain mastery in. So that's M. Okay, A is called autonomy. In other words, freedom. Always give other people the freedom to choose what they want to do. The moment you force them to do something you want to do, immediately they have no motivation, including attend this talk. Can you imagine you force somebody to attend my talk? <laughs> Straight away, you'll be not motivated already. Right? You say, who is this Jujin Xia? Well, talk so loudly, like Ah Bing. Right? So he'll be critical right from the first minute. So people should always have autonomy, the freedom to choose what they want to do. And finally, the P. P is for purpose. If people, like students, right, just now I just said it, if students cannot see the purpose of studying, all they know is like, oh, I can find a good job. That's called purposeless, right? A purpose is to find cure for cancer, is to find uh, you know, like automated cars to maybe help disabled travel from point A to point B. All these are much more noble purposes than just finding a good job, having a high salary. Please, okay, we are not robots and please don't be zombies. Be motivated by higher purposes and you will never lose your, your motivation. So I hope I've answered your question. M-A-P. Thank you very much, William. We also have another question from Kailin Nyo. Do you think it is possible to shift from being a corporate zombie to having spiritual growth while keeping to the same job? How do we make that shift in mindset? Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, the questions get increasingly difficult. Huh? Mm, let me warm up first. Make sure I give a very Hua Chong quality reply. Okay, I want to dispel a misconception. You do not have to leave your job to find your motivation, okay? It just happened that my life story is I left my job. Okay, not by choice, by the way, because the company kicked me out. Yeah, but don't let my story be your benchmark, please, okay? You can keep your job. What you need to do is look at the motivation ladder and ask yourself a few questions. Question number one, while keeping my job, while doing the same job scope, how can I better help somebody? Okay, please write it down. How can I better help somebody? And the somebody could be just a fresh grad that enter your team, right? Like most people sort of leave them alone. A lot of millennials complain to me, say, hey, this company doesn't really care about my growth. Very sad. So if you are near somebody young, the person doesn't even need to be from your department, right? You can just reach out and say, hey, uh, so-and-so, uh, why don't we go for lunch today? You know, I would like to find out how you are. And that alone will motivate you and you're still keeping your job. So imagine one of the reasons why you don't like your job could be your job scope or because your boss does not recognize you. But never mind, you can still recognize people, right? You can recognize another person and that recognition that you give to other people will motivate you. Success. By the way, success does not have to be within the company, right? You can, for example, i give you a simple example. If you are an MOE teacher, I, by the way, I have a lot of MOE teachers coming to me recently and saying, I hate my job. Okay, it's very sad. Yeah, so they want to leave, but they are afraid. You know, because the moment they leave, what are they going to do? So they still need the stable income. So they have become zombie teachers. So I tell them, you don't need to leave your job. Okay, if you really find it very impactful to teach students and to have a sense of achievement, then use your evening times and your Saturday, Sunday to start something new. Right, but if you don't want to be seen as moonlighting, then don't earn any money from it. Right, just start something new. Maybe an online tuition for free so that all the underprivileged families can come onto your platform and get education for free. You know, and then MOE cannot fire you, say, oh, you're moonlighting. No, this is charity. I'm not moonlighting. Nobody is paying me any fees. And then you have this sense of achievement that, wow, I can't believe it. Well, I don't know even I don't even know how to start a website, but now I actually run a digital platform giving free tuition. So that's called sense of achievement, feeling of success that need not come from within your company. Okay, it can come from outside your company. And those of us with a religious faith, you can find it within your faith, right? Go for a mission trip, you know, bring hope to another nation. Oh, by the way, <laughs> digress a little bit. Last year, August, I went to North Korea. Okay, North Korea, not South Korea, because there is a conference held there. There's a Hua Chong boy, uh, alumni who will go unnamed, who started a foundation together with a North Korean civil servant. <laughs> this was seven years ago. And since then, their friendship 
really blossomed. And they started running three conferences a year in North Korea. You can actually Google Choson Exchange, C-H-O-S-O-N, and you can find out what they do. This year, I was supposed to go in August, but because of COVID-19, I can't go. Next year, I definitely want to go again. If you also want to go to North Korea and bring hope to the North Koreans, please uh, just contact me through my mobile or my LinkedIn. Okay, Let, let's go together and bless this country. Okay, So that is about finding success within your company. Thank you. Thanks, Eugene. We also have a question from Yu Qi Wang. How did you find your interest? As a student, maybe I am too ambitious, but I constantly find myself wanting to be as well-rounded as possible in multiple different areas and hence find it difficult to choose what I want to do in life. Okay, this is a very, very good question. Let me introduce to, uh, you to a relatively new word, okay? This is word number one. Please write it down. In the olden days, okay, my parents' era, even my era, a lot of people want to be specialists because they keep using the same analogy. Like if you are a GP, you don't earn a lot. If you are a neurosurgeon, you earn a lot. It is true in the medical field, but I think that's about it. It is not true in any other field, I guarantee you. Even a lawyer should not specialize. I know so many lawyers who at the same time running a law firm, but they know how to run a business. At the same time, they know how to run a foundation. At the same time, they, they have many other skills. Some lawyers even act very well like Adrian Pang. Right? Some lawyers can do, uh, for example, inspirational speaking, so they become keynote speaker. So don't be such a boring specialist, Ken. Always, always have different fields of expertise. Let me give you another example. Google. Google used to be like a one-hit wonder, right? They only do search engine and nothing else. But in 2015, Google went through a complete revamp. <laughs> they even renamed themselves. Anybody knows the new name of Google? I mean, Google is still Google. Lah. Yeah, but the corporate structure is now known as another name, starting with the letter A. What is that? Alphabet. Yes. Hey, not ABC, eh. uh, it's Alphabet, okay? So Alphabet is the company. I mean, they are quite good in language uh, because Alpha is when you invest, it's called Alpha, right? So they say Alpha and you want to bet on the Alpha. So it's called Alphabet. I tell you, Larry Page and gang are geniuses. I, I really love them to bits, okay? So Google already knew that they cannot specialize. The longer they specialize in search engine, the faster they will die. So they quickly revamped themselves into an ecosystem and everybody became a polymath. Okay, a polymath. That means the project manager at the same time while managing people need to know his technical expertise very, very well. Okay, the software engineer while being very good in software engineer need to also learn persuasive speaking, negotiation skills so that he can close deals. Nobody can do one thing anymore. Everybody needs to do a few things but those few things need to connect together. I repeat, huh? when you are good in a few things, you need to connect them together. If not, I tell you, you will be burnt out because you will be torn apart like, ah, yeah, you know, uh, 9 p.m. need to do this, 7 a.m. need to do this, right? Don't be torn apart. When you combine things together, when you do one thing, uh, you're actually doing a few different things. Let me give you a bonus called time management, okay? A lot of people draw a pie chart and say, oh, 20% of my time goes to church, 10% goes to health, 50% uh, goes to work. This is the wrong way to manage your time, please. Stop drawing a pie chart and dividing it up. Always, always multiply time. Never, never divide time. Okay? How do you multiply time? By outsourcing. I repeat, huh? How do you multiply time? By outsourcing. There's a very famous word in the financial industry. I, I've been in financial since 2001, so it's my occupational hazard to use financial analogies. Leverage. Leverage. Always leverage. There's something that keeps you very busy that other people can do, especially as a student. I was a student council president, and honestly, I, I want to confess to you, I did nothing much except talk. Okay, I talked a lot. I, I rarely went and paint the banner or actually put up the mid-autumn festival canvas. You know, a lot of people did it. We have 40, what? How many people? Are? I think 45 people in the student council. You mean I have to do everything? Then what? What is the rest doing? 
So we always divide and conquer and that's why we can achieve a lot as a student counselor. And today, when I run this company called Trainium Academy, I have people doing my digital marketing. I have people doing my click funnel. I have doing, people doing my email marketing. By the way, if you receive an email from me, it was written by me, but not sent out by me, okay? I already written a lot of emails and then now my staff is sending out one by one every week. This is called leverage. So please learn to leverage and be a polymath and build an ecosystem for your life. And then you can have multiple interests and still do very, very well in your life. Oh, another guy is called Elon Musk. Yeah, this is the ultimate polymath. Okay, go and learn from Elon Musk. Okay, Eugene, um, it's almost 9.30. I was thinking maybe we can just get together for a photo. Yes, let's do that. Pop the talk. Sure. Uh, yes, we are done. Uh, ah, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Please keep in touch. Don't be stranger. Don't be stranger. Yes. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, Grace, you have some clo yeah. closing words, well, uh, Grace. I just wanted to say some words in closing that the Hua Chong alumni, the HTJC alumni was founded to foster friendships and maintain robust tasks, uh, ties among graduate students. We welcome alumni to join us as volunteers. So please uh, join us as volunteers uh, in addition to our activities. Uh, the Hua Chong JC Alumni Family organizes many activities and we hope that you will join us for as many as you can. We would like to encourage you to contribute to the Student Education Fund, which will be open till the 31st of August. This will go towards to assistance for Hua Chong students, all of whom deeply appreciate the help. Please also sign up for our Alumni College Day virtual celebration, which will be on the 15th of August this year. Um, so thank you so much, Eugene, for the talk and to all of you for joining us this evening. Goodbye.